turn the unit on. It's a, uh, it's a pulse arc and a resistance welder in one. It's a very high-tech product, but it's also very simplified and very easy to use. I recommend uh, starting in the tack mode. Uh, the tack mode is our resistance welder. You can temporarily tack something in place, or if you want to just permanently fuse it together, you can do that as well uh, by, by uh, adjusting the power. Um, to get started, I'm going to make sure that I have my two alligator clips. I'm going to have one plugged into a positive connection and one to a negative. I'm going to put one in each alligator clip. Just like that. Um, and now on the screen, some important things to, to, to make note of. Um, in tack mode, I prefer to use the foot pedal um, so I can control when the energy is released. Um, adjusting power is what you need to you know, find some good settings that work. Sometimes it's a trial and error thing. Um, and lastly, make sure you, this uh, in the bottom right corner, the play button is uh, highlighted or turned on. Otherwise, your welder will not weld. So right now I'm going to try this at about 77 watt seconds of energy. I'm just going to take my positive and my negative, line them up and touch them together, and step on the foot pedal to initiate the weld. Now you can see it stuck, but it was a little bit, it was a weak, a very weak tack weld. So I did that just to illustrate that adjusting the power uh, may be necessary. Um, seeing that it's weak, I can break it. Um, if it didn't line up perfectly, if it didn't look good, and you can just simply redo it. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that. Once you get it, once you get it effectively aligned, how you like it, now I'm going to demonstrate how to use the arc mode to permanently make that a strong, strong weld. So I'm going to switch this into arc. Um, again, just some quick pointers on the interface. Um, in arc mode, I prefer to use the touch detect, meaning I'm no longer using my foot pedal. It's all automatically, as soon as I touch my positive alligator clip to the electrode here, which is our negative contact, it's going to initiate the weld. Um, we have two rates. We have a single fire and a rapid fire setting. I'm going to start off in single fire, single fire, um, and adjust my energy to be in our micro micro mode range. Um, I'm going to use sloped agitation and so, and standard ignition are the options that I prefer to use. You simply take the piece and touch it to the elect electrode here. I'm going to use the microscope, which has a shutter, which will automatically blink for me, and I'm just going to simply touch. And that's all there is to it. Just touch where you want that weld to form, and the welder will take care of the rest. So you can see there, I made a couple welds, just three or four. Um, if I can put it up here, you can see we get a really good, clean result. A nice, shiny weld is formed. Um, the other thing to keep in mind when pulse arc welding is to not use a lot of pressure when you're welding. You don't want to be pushing in. You want to just come in and touch, make contact, and then hold still. The welder will do the rest. So. Um, after I make you know, three or four welds on one side, what I like to do is rotate that piece 180 degrees and make three or four more welds on the other side real quick. What that's going to do is uh, solidify the weld. You can see just three or four welds on each side. It gives you a very strong, strong weld. It's not something that you can easily break. You know, there may be some heat, but not very much heat at all. So you're able to touch it without any issue. Turn it up to max power. And with just one spot, show them how big of a weld spot we can, we can make. You can see right there, that right there is just one weld versus three welds. So adjusting the power um, translates into, you know, larger or smaller spot size. Also, of course, you know, the inverse is true. You can, jump, you can jump down into our nano range, which only goes up to five joules of energy, make some really small spots, which are equally as impressive. <clears throat> um, at this point, the, uh, you know, one final thing to show off, like I mentioned earlier, we have, in addition to our single fire option, we have a rapid fire mode, which uh, will allow you to create you know, multiple welts per second. So I'm just going to select rapid fire, um, go back to our, the energy setting we were using before, and just make a couple welts. So you can see we're getting you know, two to three welts a second there. A little trick to speed that up even more is to go to the advanced tab, come down to ignition, and uh, here on the preheat bar, we're going to take that down to zero, as well as the tip return delay down to zero, basically making uh, the welder operate as fast as possible. We'll come back to the arc and do that again. So you can see you're getting maybe four to five welds a second at that point, just by optimizing the speed of the welder. 
So at this point, you know, that's the majority of uh, the features that we like to demonstrate at a show. Just to quickly summarize, um, we'll just walk it through again. If you're doing attack mode or resistance mode, um, find, the, find the appropriate power setting. Um, if it doesn't stick, you know, up it a little bit. Uh, and don't be, don't, be, don't be scared if it's not sticking. It might just be a power issue. Um, make sure you're using the foot pedal. If you get good at it, you can do it automatically, but to control it and have more options, use the foot pedal. And make sure you do have the play button uh, highlighted. In the arc mode, um, if you're just doing, just to start off the demonstration, um, and for the most of your demonstrations, um, keep it in single, fi single fire, uh, touch to tech, meaning you just automatically touch and it will weld, and uh, standard plus ignition, sloped ag agitation, and the majority should be here within this this range in the center, the nan or the micro range. Um, for the majority of the welds, that's where I would recommend. That's where I stay most of the time at a demonstration. Um, for some, you know, you can turn it up, go into that ultra ro ultra range to really uh, highlight how much power it can have. Um, and sometimes it may be beneficial to show the small end. Um, and then when you do the rapid fire, you know, just select rapid fire and, and be prepared for that to, to make multiple welds per second. Just finally, to go along with everything we talked about on the screen, uh, the only other vital part to remember is making sure you're using the right alligator clip. Uh, sometimes if you try to weld and it's not going, you may, have, you may not be plugged in. You may not actually have the piece clipped on at all. Um, so make sure you're clipped. Make sure that clip is then connected where it needs to be connected. Same thing with tack mode. If you're trying to do it and it's not going, make sure you have a positive and a negative and that each screw individually is, is grounded. Um, and finally, in the arc mode, um, really the only maintenance this, this, this welder requires is a clean electro tip. Make sure that uh, you know, it's, it's clean, it's sharp, it's shiny. Or if you're going to work on, a, on, a, on an original piece, a uh, piece that some customer may, may, may bring in. Do make sure that you use a clean electrode. That will give you the best result, the cleanest weld, and the most uniform weld puddle that you can. If there's any questions or concerns or you know things that you that aren't working, you know feel free to give us give us an email, give us a phone call, uh, check the website. You know there's lots of stuff. We want to be a good long-term partner for you. If there's anything we can do, please let us know. And thank you.